start off with, I want to introduce you to some people that I regard as, as celebrities or superstars, not because of how many followers they've got, but um, from the impact that they make in my life and people's lives, as, as small as that presence may be. Um, to start off with is Dino Carella oh. from Italy, who's wrote, written a book called uh, The Way of the Wind, an excellent book. It's Thank come you. through a long journey. Uh, I, I respect and admire people that have been through a journey of life. And uh, one of the key signs of that is great humility rather than great knowledge. Um, and I would regard myself in that same category of not having too much knowledge, but realizing I did a post about how little I knew all my life and uh, Dino uh, appreciated that. So Dino, welcome. Ronald, uh, you've been uh, by Thank my you. side and by so many people's side. For so long, Ronald is uh, our senior, uh, I would say our um, our supporter in so many ways. So Ronald, um, your presence means a lot to me and to everybody. So thank you. Uh, Otto, Otto, this this call is dedicated to you, Otto. Um, I thank think you. it was very important that um, that that you need that we all need to feel how connected we are and uh, how how loved we are and. Uh, our brains and our egos tend to uh, get us trapped into believing that our life situation is our life. And uh, as Eckhart Tolle says so beautifully, your life situation is not your life. Um, so Otto, another man who I have tremendous love and respect for in Cambodia uh, and for fortune let us meet together. Otto, your presence here is very, um, very much felt and needed. Uh, Celine, um, I don't know what else to say about Celine, but Celine to me, um, is a superstar in many ways online because she keeps on posting the same type of message to people and some people read it and some people don't. And I want to talk about what that essential message is in a moment. So Celine, uh, thank you for being part of being this presence. Your humility, your wisdom and your simplicity is very encouraging. What you'll find in our group uh, meetings is not a lot of people with a lot of knowledge and sharp shooters with great ideas and spontaneous this and this terminology and huge types of things. We're just all saying, hey, we're just all here to learn. and We're all here to be together. So I think uh, humility is really, really important here. Uh, for the rest of you as well, for Dean, thank you for always being supportive and being here. Lizanne is another. Lizanne and Maria are Zen coaches with me along with Miriam, what you can see right now on my screen, uh, incredible souls that I've gotten to have a very deep, intimate relationship with. Uh, one of you guys' mics is feeding back. I'm like, oh, it's Nikki. Nikki, Nikki, would you mind? Uh, uh, that's okay. Your, your, your um, mic is feeding back into... Um, into uh, how, how do I start that? Uh, you can mute it, but first uh, introduce yourself, please, or let me know where, where, you, where you're at. Oh, it's muted now. Now we can't hear you. You got to unmute it. <laughs> yeah, technology. Is that better? There we go. There. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there. Next, yeah, I'm in there. County Durham in England. Okay, where in England? County Durham. Okay, Never not heard far of. from Newcastle. Okay, Artie, you can you can you can help us to map that out. Newcastle. Okay, I know Newcastle. Yes, yeah, yeah. everybody knows Newcastle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thanks to the football team. So welcome, Nikki. Um, if there's anybody else I haven't um, introduced, uh, please forgive me. Um, I, the way the format will work today is I'm going to do a quick introduction on the topic of intuition. Then I want to get uh, Maria to do a little exercise as well. She'll do with us. Uh, Maria, um, I just want to introduce Maria. Maria is a PhD in, um, in musicology, in music. And she has this wonderful gift. Uh, Nikki, I think somebody's mic is still feeding back into... Yeah, it's yours, Nikki. See if we can mute it. Ah, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's all good. So, so Maria has this thing called synesthesia, or uh, this ability to, to recognize each specific pitch. And I'm very jealous of that ability. Because we can listen to a piece of music together, and she can sort of micro-identify and recognize even in tonality of people's voices, she sees a different world altogether, which is really interesting from the intuition thing. Maria was, was born with this, born with this, right, Maria? Right. So, and, and, and so we've been working with that ability, and I've been astonished. And so we've been doing a lot of research onto sacred geometry 
onto um, the, the different um, uh, frequencies. You heard of the God frequency, 532, all the different types of frequencies. Uh, Raymond Reif, Nikola Tesla, they all spoke about these frequencies. Ronald's smiling there because Ronald knows a lot about that. And it's a fascinating world to, to get into. So Maria is going to give us uh, a little um, exercise to do as well. And we're going to do that later on. Um, so guys, if there's anything you want to say, let me know. Otherwise, let me. if there's any questions that you have, Please feel free. Otherwise, I'll just do a quick little introduction to what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be fun. It's not going to be, you know, sort of sitting there being bored, hopefully. So let's begin with what is intuition. Um, intuition, as we know, is the ability to intuit, to be able to, um, to, be able to recognize or feel or know without uh, rationally processing that particular thought or feeling, which doesn't even become a thought. So uh, a lot of people have this confused with, um, uh, with just feeling. There's a voice inside of you that speaks through, through a medium of intuition. Now, we use the word intuition. We use the word instinct. We use the word gut. We use the word heart. We use the word brain. So most of us live in the age of science, and science is the new priesthood. So we are all basically subservient to the priesthood of science. Some people like that, some people don't. So in order for me to get through to most of the public, you'll see my post was about the scientific and the quantum science and all the rest of it, which is all fine. However, the science, the intuition is not a science per se, as in let's scientifically break this down into particular elements. And what science was to what science is, is a very different thing. And if you guys, uh, I'm sure most of you are very well aware of this, but in, in this modern age of materialism, what we've done with science is actually uh, not exactly what science used to be. The science had, the scientists of before, if I can generalize, came with this thing of, we have no idea. This world is a mystery. Let's go figure out what we can. Rather than, we know what's going on and let's go and deduce within the interplay of what we've identified in the material universe as fact. There is no fact. Okay. Um, now, uh, in, the important things I wanted to mention is that there are many uh, centers in the body that can feed back information to you so that you know what to do and how to do it. And a lot of people in this day and age are extremely confused, extremely uncertain, extremely overwhelmed because they don't know what and who they are. And Celine would be able to tell you more later on. Uh, about what we truly are and what our true nature is, if there is an I and an our and, our and all the rest of it. But the essential nature that we are, you could say is divine, and that is one with everything and everyone around us. Now, within that uh, realm of possibilities and um, realities as we perceive them, how do we figure out how to use what we've been given for maximum benefit? So the gut has this ability to be able to intuit, to be able to sense. Many people understand gut feeling as pain avoidance. Many people have their guts. They say, I have a bad feeling about this person. What that is, is your gut is not tuned in correctly. Because if your gut is tuned in correctly, it's not going to perceive um, pain all the time. Humans have two primary goals, pain avoidance or pleasure seeking. That's what we, we mainly do. Jump in here if I'm incorrect about it, please. I, I have no issue. I'm not pretending to be the ultimate. Uh, uh, this is just from my, my particular research. So if we know how to tune the gut, can the gut tell us how we're feeling and what we can do next? Ultimately, the entire reason for this call and intuition is to get some type of clarity on where we're going, what we're doing, how we're feeling. Many of us don't even know how we're feeling right now. Because in the thought processes, we can't gauge. In the modern day world, everybody has to say, what's in it for me? Like, why do I have to listen to all this intuition bullshit? Right? What's in it for me? So what's in it for you is inner clarity and inner knowing and an alignment. Now, if you want to go deeper into the science of intuition, if you want to call it a science, is can a voice inside of you tell you what to do and what you should do? And is it right? So humans have been on this planet now for roughly 200, 300,000 years. It depends who you ask. What's very interesting is that the neocortex only developed 
40,000 years ago. Which means in neocortex, your ability to, in, to, to recognize, to uh, rationalize, to uh, uh, have empathy, to, um, to see the other person, only developed much later. So what does that mean? How did humans, from that time, Homo sapiens in our particular case, communicate, relate, know the world, know nature, know each other? How did they do this? If it wasn't through language, it wasn't through the neocortex. So there was this innate ability in us to be able to, to feel and act independently of thought. Now that we have developed the, um, the neocortex, the heart is the, according to Aristotle and, and many of the mystics and scientists as well, the heart is the seat of consciousness. This is where your entire identity, and this is proven easily, if I say to you, where are you? And I point to you and I say, you over there. You'll say, who, me? You won't say, who, me? Because right? if, 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 your, if your entire seat of your personality and your identity was here, of course you'd be saying, are you talking to me? No culture does that. Everybody says, I am here. So you could say that your identity and your entire being is located where your heart is located. Now, the heart to me has been a field of study for me for quite a while right, right now uh, from my past in, um, experiences. And I've seen some incredible transformative results using the heart as a, understanding the magnetic field and then radiating that out to the, to the world. Um, what I want to do is to break it up is to do a little exercise about, about heart-brain coherence. So we have the brain, we have the heart. What ends up happening, we have an over-reliance on thought. What should I do now? If I go this way, that's going to happen. If I go that way, that's going to happen. And you can't seem to decide which way to go. So what happens? It's called analysis paralysis. Right? Ever go into Amazon and try to buy something? You're like, oh, I should choose that one. No, that one. That one. The review says this one. Maybe it's a fake review. And then you sit there and you're like, you know what? Just go to Tesco or wherever your local shop and just get it because it's exhausting to be able to use the rational thought process. So now, if you let the heart be the general and let the brain take second stage and you form an alignment between heart and brain, you find a huge amount of coherence, uh, inner knowing, uh, ability to act without hesitation. Hesitation is caused, caused by thought. You know, you say, there's a part of me that wants to do it and another part of me doesn't. The part of you that wants to do it is your heart. And the part that's now come about going, yeah, but you know, if you do that, go bungee jumping, you know, we may be dead. We, we can't have that in, in a worst case extreme scenario. But if the heart and the brain are in alignment, then we start seeing some tremendous benefits. So the, the ego mind or the, um, the, the survival instinct is about getting ahead, dominating, killing, fighting, taking, learning, all that kind of stuff. Very few of the people on this call have that interest. What do I get out of it? What's in it for me? Because they're all living from the base desires. Now, the heart, for it to open up, requires you to interact in the world with four things, basically. Compassion. Um, let me see if I can get the list here. But basically, you've got... Um, okay, so it's appreciation, gratitude, care and compassion all these things appreciation is the feeling of um I'm, I'm feeling appreciative about whatever it is i'm grateful for my life or anything else like that care and concern for another human being now your heart starts beginning opening up and then compassion for one another also then begins to elevate the heart and literally open up which means that you're getting more resonance in here getting more frequencies coming through you so can we Activate the heart. Now, the Heart Math Institute was an incredible organization. If you haven't, you should check them out. HMI Heart Math Institute, uh, who I've been following for a long time, and Joe Dispenza, with his incredible work as well, has uh, experienced uh, with his clients tremendous results um, using the Heart Math um, ability. So, what we're going to do is a short exercise to become coherent. It means our heart and brain will become coherent. So, guys, if you have any questions, or anything to say, please shout it out now. Any comments, anything you want to add, please go, please go ahead, because I've been talking nonstop. Anything? No? Uh, Rashad? <laughs> yes. Just, just about on this uh, art math. Um, 
Institute, yeah. I, I basically uh, attended a seminar uh, hosted by Greg Braden a few years ago. And uh, it's, it's uh, I think, one of the uh, advocate uh, for, for of this uh, group of scientists. And that was really, really interesting. And uh, he showed us uh, live uh, with uh, with uh, some instruments that they put uh, on yourself, basically, that when you are in coherence, the the energy elevates and has the power to influence the energy of the of the audience. And in fact, uh, he said that even the military are using this technology, for example, to diffuse particularly uh, critical. Uh, places on earth where you know a war might happen and they put a number of guys there to create this energy this wave of coherence uh, to diffuse that now it's a uh, it's very fascinating and uh, I'm just reporting what he said I'm not sure whether this is in fact uh, uh, something that truly happens but if any one of us experiences that, definitely, you know, that can be your own truth because you can experience what is true to you. And the moment you sit and find that seek, that, that, that stillness, that peace within you, definitely automatically you become more peaceful and at ease and, and you feel well. So definitely that works for each one of us. Then, uh, whether it works really to influence others, that I wouldn't be able to say, but uh, it's a very interesting study and um, I thought I'd mention that. That's really uh, excellent input there. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Greg Braden is, uh, is, is the type of scientist like Joe Dispenza, like uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who are the type of people that this world um, desperately needs. And so um, you can, uh, along with um, uh, a lady that did, a, a, a Lynn McTaggart did a book, uh, a whole series of tests on uh, the intention experiment in, in groups of eight and found that when it was people in eight, um, all of a sudden you were able to influence. You see these group prayers where someone is ill and they put the person down. You saw that in Avatar, we've always seen the movie Avatar and they put the lady in the middle and they're all doing this movement. So what's happening is that your heart, all your hearts are being entrained. Entrainment is this incredible science that um, has been um, fascinating to me. You see them with birds as well and be able to navigate and move in a, a specific pattern. Us as human beings, when everybody in the room, this virtual room, our hearts begin to entrain, and I've done this in my uh, other master classes as well, we, we, we manifest as a group intention. Lizanne, you were on one of them, and we have this intention, you'd say, I desire whatever it is, and it's always something that's much more of a higher cause rather than I want a brand new Ferrari. And then we all, nothing wrong with a Ferrari, by the way, it's a pretty good car as well. And then we all start um, sharing and moving that intention together, and, and it does. So, so Otto, um, uh, do you know, absolutely, um, it has been proven. And in fact, Heart Math Institute have set up uh, locations all over the world where you can join in these meditations and you go and uh, emit from from your heart um, and, and it does have an influence. So if we can do this in our lives and start because your rational mind, your survival instinct, like Celine was coming on here blowing kisses to everybody. You see, that goes against your rational mind and your survival instinct. Like, hang on, what am I doing blowing kisses? I've got to be better than that one. And, you know, look at that one's got, you know, a nicer shirt than me. And, you know, what about the bank balance of this guy? And you're in the race and now you're just serving evolution and you're stuck in your brain. So now if we can live from our heart centers, we can definitely change ourselves, our families and the planet. Now, I don't want to get too, you know, uh, let's go change the world. But yes, Celine, go ahead. This is great. Um, I, I did a post a while back, um, and it was about the heartbeat, and that's why I'm bringing this up. And if we think of not just getting together eight, but aware that eight, our, how many are we on the planet? Eight billions? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 
if we realize that all our be all our hearts are beating right now in yeah. synchronicity we yeah. all some have a little bit of hiccups in their heartbeats or but there are eight billions of people yeah. heart beating right now and all it takes whether we're closer in distance because we're all energy it's all vibrational if the awareness the spaciousness of realizing that imagine imagine what i can do yeah yeah and yeah exactly and this is this is the point of what we're doing here so uh without mm -hmm. further ado shall we shall we try it out shall we get our our hearts into coherence and align them with our brain is it, and then we can continue on from here so then what we can do is you can place your left hand in the center of your chest where your heart's located and your right hand over your left hand i like to close my eyes you can do the same now imagine the breath coming in and out through your heart so in breath through your heart hold it into your heart feel it activating your heart and then out breath through your heart long out breath letting it all out another deep in breath through your heart hold it in feeling into your heart becoming aware of your heart as the general as your leader and deep out breath and the last one deep in breath through your heart imagine the breath coming in through your heart hold it into your chest feel your heart activating feel all the neurons and all these other types of things around your heart becoming very alive the magnetic field of your heart becoming activated your guiding intuition that it come alive and on the out breath that it all out now if you can recall an experience of something of gratitude so gratitude for something that you feel the feeling can be felt here you don't need the event to happen here you just have to activate the heart to create that feeling of gratitude so for anything that you feel deep gratitude for in your life this is again going against your survival instinct so feel deep gratitude for life for the mystery of the universe for this call for the incredible souls on this call i feel great gratitude for having this opportunity to connect with all of you feel compassion for each other and how you care for one another and you want the best for each other not just on the call but on the planet and in our families and for those that we don't like exercise compassion towards them do the unusual thing and forgive and be compassionate towards them it activates your heart and allows you to become more coherent feel a deep sense of care for everything and everyone other than yourself feel you being here on the planet to serve to give and how it makes you elevated by your service tune into your heart feel your heart activating sending messages to your brain feel your brain and your heart coming together synchronizing now connect using your intuition to everyone in this call in this room via your intuition that our hearts are in sync and you can do this just by your imagination a faculty we've stopped using imagine all our hearts synchronizing together the same heartbeat the same intention to serve to elevate to love deeply to fall in love more to care for each other more and feel what that feels like secret is in the feeling And now if you can become aware of your thoughts that come into your mind if there's something specific that you've been wanting to know what to do or how, how to go about doing it we need to show you a technique while we in this great spot of heart brain coherence to ask this question of ourselves what should i do about x y and z keep it vague now the way to know 
whether it's coming in from intuition and your heart or from your brain, is that have you had that thought and have you tried to solve the problem with that same method? So if you say, oh, well, I'm trying to go down the road. Did you, did you always complain about how your car wasn't working? So then immediately your car comes to mind. So ignore the car. So if you're trying to go down the road, then how do I go down the road? Asking your intuition. And if the car comes up, you ignore that. And now feel in. There should be a moment of great quietness with no answers. But if you're getting babble, that's the brain babbling. Feel into that. Feel deeply into your heart. And this is a muscle you're going to have to train. And it takes a while. Connect into your third eye, which is in between your eyebrows. Become aware of the center of intuition. And now activate your gut, your belly, by breathing in and out through your belly. Your breath puts your awareness where your belly is located. So take a deep breath in through your belly. Let your belly expand on the in-breath. And let it contract on the out-breath. The Japanese and the Chinese say, this is the cosmic consciousness in our bellies. Take a deep breath in, expand the belly. And on the out-breath, let all the air out. Most of our problems happen because we don't let the air out of on our exhale. So exhale deeply. One last time, in-breath. Expand the belly. And on the out-breath, fully release all the air out of the belly. To the point where your belly button squeezes towards your spine. And with that, you can bring this wonderful energy cover over your uh, face and uh, return back to this moment. And now if you want proof, look at yourself and look at everybody else and, and see if you can see the difference. If you're, if you're looking without your eyes and you're looking with your intuition, you, you can't tell me that the entire energy of the, each person here has changed. Do you guys agree? So, uh, Maria, do you want to do this thing about music now? I was going to play a card game, but we may leave that for our next call. Uh, shall we do it now? Let's do a quick tip. So, th what this card, and then Maria, you can. This card game, what it does is, rather than you getting the right card, you're learning to focus on your intuition. And it's part of the exercises I do in, this, uh, in the course that I, that I run as well. So... I don't know what the card is, right? This is just a standard deck of cards, right? This is all different cards. So I'm just shuffling it now. Now your job, I'm not very good at shuffling, is to guess what this card is. Yeah. So you've got to guess. Now, before you guess, what you have to do is to imagine through your heart that you can see me looking at this card. So you're imagining, you're sitting here and you're saying, ah, I see what he's seeing there. Now I'm going, I'm, I'm actually imprinting on my heart this card, what this card is. Then your job is to take an intuitive guess. Now, if the number comes up from your brain, that's not the number. This is what you have to learn. So the, uh, the point is not to get it right. So if you know where the uh, message thing is on the right hand side, the little message thing there, just pop in your answer. So when I want you to first tune in to the heart. You can close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Try not to get your mind involved. Tune in to your heart. Settle down your body. Awaken your heart's intuition. And when a number pops up, look where it comes from. If it's from your brain, it's not the one. And if they come in sequences, they're not the one. But if you're sure about it, there is no show, but you say, this is the one. It's not a guess. It's a knowing from your intuition. Type it in, whatever it is. Only Three. one guess. Ace, okay. it's, I, I don't know where to type. Anything. Type, type a number in. Okay, type, type in whether it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, know. 7, 8. You know, you know how cards work. One to ten, then there's Jack, Queen, King, Ace. 
So choose a number between one and 10 or Jack, Queen, King, Ace. It's Ace of Heart. I, I don't know where to write. Oh, just say Ace, it's fine. I heard you. It doesn't, you don't have to do the hearts thing. That's too complicated, but okay, you can okay. if you want. If you're sure about the hearts thing, anybody else wants to have a go? We're gonna I do this again. Eight. Hmm? Sorry, I see Ace of Heart too. Same as Celine okay. from the first moment. Okay, this is what it is. It's a jack. Oh. Can you guys see? It's a jack. Okay. Now, the yes. point is not to get this right. Remember that. Because your brain yeah. is programmed to get it right. And if you get it within three, within three, so say, for instance, it's, it's, a, it's a six, and you say seven or eight or five, that's, that's very close. So feel. It doesn't work with numbers. It's a feeling. This is the muscle you're training because it doesn't work with uh, what I'm showing is when that answer comes up, it's not going to say go to the market and get two packs of toilet paper. It's not going to come like that. It's a deep seated knowing. Okay. So I'll shuffle again. Obviously I don't know the number, right? Uh, right. Now watch my heart from your heart. Focus on the center, my heart. Okay. Okay. I got it. Welcome to whoever's just joined us now, playing a card game, join in. So the number is written right here. Or the letter, to make it more tricky. You've got to see it. Feel it now. Feel it. You know what this card is, intuitively. Look at where it comes from inside of you. Okay. One more. Give me one more. Okay. Right. That's what I got. See how people are shaking their heads because they want to get it right. You guys are so programmed to get it right. They're not supposed to get it right. This is to train your intuition. Right. So I'm going to play along as well now because I don't know what it is. So let's see. Okay. So I got the card and I'm leaving it there. Actually, no, you may think I'm cheating, so I'd rather not. But I have an 85% success rate on this uh, when I'm in, the, in a deep state of coherence. So, uh, I don't know what this card is either. Nobody has any idea. But you know what this is. This is the last one we're doing. So see if you can feel somewhere differently inside of you for this answer. Focus inside into your intuition. Let it come to you. Be patient. I got nine. We'll see. Ready? Oh, it's all these kings and queens. Okay. One more? One more? Okay, one more. I don't know why it's getting all these. Okay. The whole point is for you to recognize where that's coming from. It's not the brain. Okay? Here's the card. Now I'm going to imprint it. Now, if you watch my heart, I'm going to be saying it out loud. So please don't type in an answer. Okay? No, this is too tricky because this, it just keeps on coming with the same thing. Okay, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Good. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to imprint this number on my heart. So read this number from your heart. To what I'm written, writing there. Listen carefully. Don't type. Listen from your heart, not from your ears. Feel the answer. I'm giving it to you. And if you got it, type it now. Let's see if we get closer by this definition. Go on. Eight, nine. Seven, nine, much closer. Amazing, huh? When I imprinted it, it's a six because the nine and the seven count. We got we got two nines there. We got an eight. That's much closer. So when I imprinted it on my heart, and you were feeling from your heart, it became the the numbers came uh, more uh, in order. Doing one last one. Again, read it off my heart. Here's the number. I'm putting it in there. Read it off my heart. Don't just type it. You've got to feel it. Five, 
Focus deep inside of your heart. Ignore your brain and the patterns it wants to form. And go ahead. Type it in. What do we got? Did you all type it in already? Six. So nine, eight. Well, does anybody get close to six? Five. Five. Uh, Five yeah, days. right. That's, yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, so that's one thing that's activating a different part of you. You notice how confusing it is and you can't figure it out. That's that's the whole point. Like this beautiful thing that Rumi, they asked Rumi and they said, what's, what's this thing? You keep on talking about silence all the time. Why do you keep on talking about silence? And he said, God never spoke to me using words. See, God, intuition, the universe doesn't shout out words. Pay your mortgage. It doesn't work like that, right? But there's this intuitive knowing inside of you. And when it starts developing, it's frightening. It's frightening and it's so rewarding. So, yeah, uh, it takes practice. Of course, it's not going to come in one particular day. And the point is not to win the card game. Right? Although you could make a lot of money. <laughs> if you ask the universe to pay off your bills, and you're like, hey, I know how to pay off my bills. I just guess the card. Uh, guys, uh, so Maria, uh, if there's anybody who wants to add anything, you can. Otherwise, Maria, please, if, if you don't mind. Yes. Ahead, yeah, I, it's funny that you said the heart synesthesia, have synesthesia because you just explained to me why I think the way I think. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't realize it's just normal. So I was just thinking how to. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Explain that. What, what did you mean? I always think in shapes, pictures, uh, uh. take things out of everyday life and uh, making it into this because this big idea has always confused me i cannot i have yeah. to i have to make them really simple to understand and i think it right. comes from my experience of teaching very little children for a very long yeah. time yeah. so i created a model for what um uh, intuition might be because this this phrase came to me we say i want to be true to myself and I think that phrase means that we intuitively understand our truth. When we say our truth, I think we mean our purpose. So every everyone has this feeling of what is right and what is our purpose. So, uh, and the, the intuition is almost like a pull, something that pulls us back or pulls us towards a direction, towards this um, kind of... Uh, uh, truth so i made this i made this uh, uh image which is very influenced by you because you say, say that everything goes in spirals uh so imagine if this axis here is our inner self our purpose our truth we live our lives rotating like this around that mm, and what mm, is, mm. Our is our uh, intuition is this magnetic field that pulls us towards what is the, the truth feeling for us. And every time we go off and we, we make a decision that doesn't agree with that, we feel that kind of gravity. And we mm. say, I didn't hear my gut instinct. And that's yeah. a strange, and that's a strange uh, um, phrase as well, because why do we say hear our gut? So I was... Yeah. I know people say inner voice, and probably it's true, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So I think the connection between listening to our gut and listening to sound is vibration. So when we say listen to the gut, we mean we just feel where we resonate, where our vibration is right, where the harmony happens. So now this mima is this. So we rotate around this, but we also vibrate. And that's intuition, I think. That's how we go around in life. Mm -hmm. And this idea of vibrations opens this discussion about music. And um, I think people take it very lightly. They say music is the language of intuition, only because music um, doesn't have words. And uh, a, lo a lot of the time it helps us connect with our um, subconscious, with our inner thoughts. But uh, I think music can be as problematic as language because we assign meaning to music. We say this 
uh, reminds me of I don't know, something, an emotion or, or an image, and it becomes complicated. So when we are in a stage of listening to music intuitively, we say we lose ourselves to the music, which is yeah. very accurate because to, under, to, to listen intuitively, you need to stop thinking, you need to stop being you, and but sometimes you need to lose the music too. So I have a story about that, that comes from my personal experience. Um, because me as a person, I'm very close to the world of hearing impaired people. I'm a musician, but I'm also the mother of a hearing impaired child. And it's been a very long time that I I'm trying to help people feel the music, bypassing everything that is broken or not working or all of that. So a few years ago, I created this uh, music program for hearing impaired children. I, I, did it, I made a class for my son, basically, because he's very musical. I wanted him to have this experience. And then I kept on running that for three years until COVID started. But in 2018, I got an award for that class. I got the grant for innovation uh, as the one of the two most innovative music educators in the UK. And as part oh. of that grant, I had to go and run a pilot study with a group of children that had different um, uh, abilities of uh, hearing. So some were partially could partially hear, some had cochlear implants and they could hear music, but there was a little girl that had no uh auditory nerve no inner ear and the outer ears were malformed so this girl could not hear anything and i was going to that place with a guitarist because i wanted them to have live music to, to experience these vibrations of the live music and uh, the minute gordon played the first chord all the children didn't hear it they, they didn't even pay attention to it but this girl that had her back to him turned and went straight towards him. She had mobility problems as well. She was only, only two and a half. She goes near him, completely ignores him, and goes next to him in this white box, which was his amplifier, and put her hands on it, and stayed there for 40 minutes, hugging a white box. And for six months, while we were going there, every week she was doing the same thing. So for me, it was like running a class in two dimensions. One was the children that could hear and could respond to music and play and sing and express themselves. And then there was this other girl that was tuning in to the vibrations, to the most fundamental things of the music. And she was living in absolute silence, but she was happy, focused, content, and stayed there. And it was like the black and white of um, the negative and positive of a photograph, this yeah. experience. So the experience of that girl shows to me what it means to lose music. Sometimes you have to lose your senses to tune in to your inner self, your truth. And if we use music like that, we have to learn to do that too. So. Yeah. I'm gonna just say about this exercise, and then do you wanna say something? Yeah, yeah. Just go on about the exercise because that's yeah, that's that's important. So usually we feel that we are in uh, in tune, I call it, but that we intuitively listen to music when we drive and uh, we listen to our favorite song, and all of a sudden, because of the repetitive uh, this the repetition of the road, it's very we're getting bored, so we get into this trance and. Uh, we say we lose ourselves to music. That, that's, that's a type of listening to music intuitively. Um, but uh, the, I would like you to, to do this exercise at home because we don't have the music here. You know the conductors that they, they do this? Um, yeah. There are two movements in that. This, which means volume. So the biggest you go, the louder you go. And this, like the movement of the hand, is the tempo. So I want you to notice that when you start moving your hand to music, after a few seconds, you realize that you are not really moving your hand to music. It's another part of you that is moving that hand. Mm. And if you tune into that music for a little while, 
then you start feeling that although this is a recorded thing, you have no influence on it. You really feel that you actually affect the loudness, affect the speed. It's something that happens. Uh, it, it, it's, it's like a miracle. It's like painting life with gestures. So I would like you to try. It would be funny at the beginning because doing that is not very, you know, it's a bit childish. But if you let go and you, fo and you just focus on the music, you will feel that. And that's how intuitively you can listen to music intuitively. That's all I wanted to say, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Maria. That's uh, thank really you, Maria, that, taking the time to 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 tell us. Very yeah, um, yeah. We're planning to run a, a course on this where we will be taking people into various levels of intuition. The topic is so broad and so vast, and it just keeps my eyes like I'm just uh, entirely overwhelmed by how much people of the past knew about all of this, about frequencies and about uh, sensing all these things that our rational minds make us believe that we're just so insignificant, that there's actually nothing really going on. It's me and my problems and me and my wife and me and my this and my whatever. But there's so much more mystery and intrigue in this universe. And when you start exploring all these things, I mean, it doesn't stop. You know, I started reading about uh, 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 the Hermetica and the, and, and the rules of, 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 of nature and the, the laws, the cause and effect. You, you go back into the, like, for instance, the Kabbalion, you know, the Kabbalah and all the rest of it. These people had the perfect science with the Egyptians as well. So much of it has been lost uh, in us achieving what we want and, and getting to live a sort of a fruitful, wholesome life. Many of us think we can't actually get anything we want in life we just like sort of passive observers to life this is not true on the other hand if you if you know that you are life then you don't really want anything the problem is we want this thing outside of ourselves because we don't know the true nature of our being in every cell in our body in every uh, echo and frequency it's quite amazing and um, I, I want to do this as a as a couple of uh, weeks, uh, or maybe an, another session as well, and we really get more into tuning in that intuitive muscle that has become atrophied because we're not using it. So the muscle is not being used, it's not tuned in. But when it starts tuning in, wow. I mean, most of you know this, when somebody's going to call and you'd be like, I was just thinking about him, and then he called. These are random things, right? Or, uh, you know, I just feel bad about, I've just been thinking about this person, right? Otto, for instance, right, in that particular way, I called Otto and I said, "Just I, I have to speak to you now, right? And, and I don't know why. And I said, no, I should just send him a message. But something inside of me, you see that? Something inside of me said, no, call him. Then I said, no, but it's late and you know he'll be sleeping. And he picked up the call. It was midnight. So all of it happened. Now, who was the one doing it so, so perfectly? It wasn't me, but it was moving through me. And that's the whole point that we are vessels. It's not us and my ego and myself. It's just this enormous universe. And I'd love to give you guys more uh, tips and, uh, and tricks into engaging in those senses. You have holotropic breathing. You have uh, DMT. You have Kundalini. Uh, all these things that I've researched and studied and practiced. And the Chinese have got a whole field of study about this as well. All to, to tune in and to really know what you are and what you want out of life in the true essence of it. So, uh, does anybody want to add on or say something? Um, I, uh, who is mentor is? Go, go ahead, Fardin. Ah, Fardin. Yes, Fardin. Go, Dino, come on, go ahead. Go ahead, Dino, please. Okay. I was just going to say that uh, what you just said, Richard, is uh, it's, it's so absolutely true that... Um, I witnessed this a uh, couple of times in a, in a in a very very loud way uh, yeah. when I when I went to the U.S. Uh, because you know in writing the book I was writing the book uh, uh, and the main character was traveling across the Indian reservation and so before knowing that there was a place that is called the Sleeping Dragon. I wrote that there was a rocky formation in the shape of like a big dinosaur uh, lying on the ground. Now, I used oh, the wrong wow. terms, but then when I found it out, there was a, this rocky formation called the Sleeping Dragon. And the thing that is most amazing is that 
when I was writing, I said, you know, the main character goes on top of the sleeping dragon and there was a pond where the moon reflected the, li the light. So it was like looking at the moon twice. And, and, and of course, it was just the fruit of my imagination, I thought, imagination, which was not imagination. Because when I went there with the Indian guide, a, a Navajo guide, he told me that the translation of the name Old Jito is the Navajo word. So a language I, I haven't got a clue about, it means the moonlight that, it res, that is reflected on water. Wow. And so I had goosebumps all over because that was even a foreign language I didn't know anything about. And I wrote it before I was going there and, and I learned about that. So this stuff happens and it happens the moment you don't think and you don't even imagine. And even this imagination is something that is worth uh, deepening the concept because sometimes we think we're imagining things, yeah. but sometimes what comes through to us and we interpret it as imagination is in fact an information that is out there that flows yeah. through us the moment we yeah. allow it. Mm. Totally, totally true. Absolutely spot on. Uh, I'm going to let you guys, uh, Ferdin, and then uh, 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 your name's not in this. I'll call you baby for, for the for the sake of. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> I have you... to fix that. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> no, so you know, just on that that story, Nick uh, uh, Dino, a group of friends of mine. I went to visit the Sahara and the people of Morocco, and these people have got this to a fine uh, science. So a group of guys went out into the desert, got really lost, right? And they didn't know. They just kept on going, kept on going to the end of the desert, end of the road, in the middle of the night. And they saw a house over there with some lights. And they said, oh. So they went up with the lights, and they go into the house. And those people have the table set. And they're saying, oh, sorry. Uh, we, and he says, would you mind coming to join us? Because we've been waiting a long time for you. And he was like, what? So he sat down, had the meal. These people knew that this person's coming from the middle of nowhere to have this meal with us. I mean... It's unbelievable what it's unbelievable, right? But yes. it's actually it does happen, and the more you tune into it, the more you recognize that over reliance on thought is 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 what's causing us the issues. I just wanted to share that with you. Go ahead, uh, Fadin, and then um, baby. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, I would start with uh, Einstein's quote. He says, "The intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant." We mm. have created a society that honors the servant and has right. forgotten the gift. Indeed, right. it is not intellect, but intuition which advances humanity. Intuition tells man his purpose in life to, self, to serve this planet and other people. Why didn't right? I just quote so Einstein in the first place? That's beautiful. Carry on, carry on. For this. Thank you. <laughs> intuition, if you take the word intuition, you divide into two. In is what happens inside. Intuition is your mentor and coach. Right. And every day, my intuition tells me, don't eat sugar, sleep early, right? Don't smoke. It is your best coach telling you what to do, but do we listen? Rarely. Why? Because it's you, your intuition, versus them, the program, the conditioning. So it's a tug of war. But what will help if I take other sessions of Rich, uh, Richard and team, was awareness and mindfulness awareness and mindfulness is a very good partner and team that you can use to try to uh, listen to your intuition every day it's telling you especially sleep early or sleep seven or eight hours you know one needs again um uh what they call it uh, the internal gift uh, not just the external gift the bonuses the salary and so on go in pushed in that drive listen to insight as well so thank you very much everyone for listening thank you Fadin. thank you very much uh go ahead uh, uh baby kramer <laughs> yes what is your so name I, uh, my name is so okay those of you who have met linkedin francis okay so i'm named after my oh. mother you you don't have enough filipino friends if you don't know somebody named baby so usually it's the youngest oh. girl named after mom okay. so i'm named uh, okay, after okay. mother so i'm baby kramer okay. but i'm six okay. foot tall so but okay, okay. <laughs> anyway um so my, my delving into all of this, like, you know, energy healing, everything, meditation before mindfulness was even coined was some 2000, no, 1998 in Lago de Garda. I was living in Italy and I go off to this grief, um, like grief circle weekend. And it's a very small group. We were only about 10. 
and during the whole, it was a three day actually, so three day, four three nights, four days. And during the whole time, they were doing Crystal, the first time I'd come across Reiki. Um, and so part of me was like, okay, let's see what this is about. But I needed, I needed to go through a process of my own. Um, and for some reason, all most of us kept getting this imagery of like I kept getting very strongly this like horse, but like a powerful horse, and another you know person was like seeing like this this wings, but not angel wings, but like just wings. But everybody was getting something of wings, horse, and there's one particularly attractive space holder who was her energy was just so beautiful, so beautiful. And the last night she um, pulls up her shirt and she has a Pegasus on her back. So it was just that was my first encounter with something of like intuition and this exchange without trying hard, right? Because you're like open and there's none yeah. of this like setting you up for for trying. So and then from then on you become um sensitized or you try to look for it, it doesn't happen, right? And then it's yeah. when you let yeah. that flowing. But it was just something about her that she was able to imprint on all of us. And but even just her whole presence was just really very attractive and, and soothing and, and healing. So yeah. That was my Wonderful. first experience into Thank all you. of that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, Celine? Hi. I just, uh, um, this morning I woke up early and I was sitting quietly and uh, meditating and, you know, sort of like entering into that spaciousness, of awareness, this. gathering, thinking about you, Richard, and and everyone that was going to be there and um i was tagged on linkedin i went on linkedin while i had my coffee and uh, vasudeva which uh, i i really uh, feel deep uh, gratitude for his writings and his sharing about awareness. He tagged me to a person that I didn't know. His name is Arif Sawal. And may I read the what he wrote this morning, which was yeah. to me was yeah. just great. He said, we need opposites for recognition. God is non-existence. So, God created this existence for his recognition. Man is in existence, this existence. So, man must go into non-existence to realize himself. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. It really, really touched yeah. me, and it my it brought me to what intuition was, um, because what is was what if and as you said, Maria, what is what if, uh, and I'm getting all numb. Uh, intuition is simply all that surrounds us in between what existence that we can see with the eyes is hmm. what if intuition is simply the true simplest deep intelligence that is between between the manifestations of the bodies and nature and and that we see so the non-existence that we are looking for already happening is, is is intuition is intelligence yeah. and i looked into uh i i looked into missions if i like words as well and some words I don't even know intuition them, it says it's divination and what's yeah. the opposite of intuition it's reason and knowledge so we're not using, <laughs> okay. yeah, it's reason and knowledge. So we're not using our intuition because as human beings born manifested into this body with, and lost, you know, t this intuition, we do get it. We do get our intuition because we fall into gaps of nowness at time of, you know, if we practice meditation, we practice, mm, if we listen to music, 
and we become the music. And if we, um, if we dance and we become the dance, and if we paint and we become the paint, if we lose this, yeah. you know, that has a form, which is still energy, but what everything is seen, if we lose it, then we capture, we infuse ourselves from that intuition mm -hmm. already all around between two trees, where's nothing, between two stars. And if we, and we, who talked about reflection, reflection earlier, I forget. But what came to me was, if we look at the sky at night and the brilliance of all the stars, yeah. it's simply reflecting mm -hmm. all of our this manifestation that we all are. Anyways, I'm going far aside, but I'm gone now. So, um, so. Most of the people want to know how, right? How can I do? I, we, and we need recipes. We want recipes. We want to get there. And, and it's easy to say, well, you need to remember because this is your nature. Well, it's not that easy, you know? If, if you tell someone, well, you're into a different person, get into it. Get in touch with it. So how does one get in touch with it? Why do we want to get in touch with, with intuitions? Because we're in a, in a society where you use mind, the, the opposite of intuition, because we want control. We want to control. So we, we use reason. We use knowledge. We accumulate knowledge and so on, which is wonderful, which is, 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 which is expansion of science and men and so on which is necessary but it seems like we have this yearning constant yearning of of um of silence this constant yearning to know self to to abide in that i-ness beyond i-ness beyond what is nameless which is cannot be seen or or heard and this is so how how do we and you spoke of the heart Rishad and the heartbeat is is a it's not even a sound it's an energy it's a beat it's a sound of the middle of the the earth and even just listening to our, our heartbeat is amazing it's a beginning start it's a, it's, a, it's beautiful a beautiful tool and there's also breath breath and breathing in with the third and eye and breathing out into nothing we get in touch with and intuition when we disappear and we get infused and embraced by that intuition where all of a sudden we have this wow and we move towards this place or another place so Thank you. That's all I had to say. Celine, we always appreciate your input. Thank you so much for uh, Thank you, Celine. Uh, those words of uh, wisdom. I agree with you. Does anybody else want to um, share anything or add anything? We will be having another call either next week or the week after as a part two on intuition. And then we will be having a masterclass for those that really want to train that uh, muscle as well. Yes, Otto. Uh, also, yes, I, yeah, I, I just want to share something. I think that fits in um, because we talk about intuition and imagination. You know? um, I had an experience about 20 years ago and there was an unpleasant situation around midnight. It was between Christmas and New Year, so 28th of December. It had minus 20 degrees outside and it was 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock at night and I was in an unpleasant situation. After I quarrel, I had to walk home. And that walking home that, I don't know, let's say 15 kilometer, you know, in summer, that's not the problem, you know, but this minus 20 degree, not equipped for a, a cold uh, winter walk, I had to walk. So I walked around the lake in my home province and I walked there already about, let's say my feeling, two hours. And I said to myself, it's going to be another two hours till I reach home. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I can take that. I'm frozen down to the bones already. 
And then I was so with myself and it was dark and there was just moon stars and the reflecting of that beautiful lake beside me and I walk and there was no traffic and no nothing. As I said, it was after midnight and this time of the year, everyone is sleeping at home and they want to have some freedom between Christmas and New Year before the whole thing start again. So I was walking, I said, you know, how am I going to do that? And then I said to myself, you know, a taxi should come. And then, and then my brain said to me, you are completely nuts. How will, from who, from where will now a taxi come between one and two o'clock in the night when everyone is sleeping, there is no business, there is no one going out for a party, that the big party is happening two uh, days later in Christmas, which are celebrated, so people want to be home and want to have freedom. <laughs> no disturbing, it. there is no taxi. Even the taxi drivers take time out. So I said, yeah, and then I looked so up, you know, so to the stars, and I said to myself, a taxi should come. And then I walk and walk and walk, and then so suddenly from far away, I saw a light, and it was a bit foggy, you know, it looked like one light. And then it came closer and closer, and then I saw, oh, it's a two lights. It's not a bike, or what is obviously a car. And then it come closer and closer, and suddenly, like I tell you, like in an old uh, Fellini movie or in a classic movie, you see that suddenly you see that two big lights and you see that sign in yellow taxi. And yeah, the taxi driver, I don't even have to stop the taxi. I, I, the taxi driver stopped himself and said, open the door and said, come in quickly. It is so cold. Where are you coming from? Are you completely crazy? This is not the time for taking a walk. I said, sorry, sir. I had a trouble with someone and I have to take home. He said, where you come from? I said, from there and there. He said, oh, you walk in here already two or two and a half hours. I say, where you want to go? And I told my, my, my goal. And he said, yeah, but it is another two hours to walk. You know, actually, I never, I never drive around this time, and I, I, I drove someone home who had a problem, but actually I never drive back my home this way. But my intuition, and I don't know why, told me this night, drive home this way. And so I could pick you up. Beautiful and I story. never forgot that. I just, uh, you know, I just, Really, literally, why, why, when we say, oh, we don't know how to do anymore, then we look up to heaven and say, please, I don't know. I have no answer. I have no solution. I just know <laughs> I am frozen to the bones. And if I ever arrive home, I have a lung infection, <laughs> really, because it was really minus 20, no cap, no gloves, no nothing, just not prepared for a walk. The taxi driver, somehow, he could feel that. He said, I intuitively, someone told me, I cannot now say why, drive this way back home. This was even a longer way for I get back to my house, you know, but someone, something from inside said, this night, drive home this way. And so he saved my life probably. And that I never forgot, you know, really, because it was really cold and we know we can survive everything. 99% <laughs> from all our problems in our life, we can do it in blood, sweat and tears and whatever it takes. But this is one of many examples I can tell where I imagined something, you know, we call it manifesting, you know, but it was just, it was a prayer to heaven. I tell you that I did not manifest what I want to manifest when I know already there is no text around and no one is on the road. It was really just dark and cold. There was not one light. I think even the train stopped that night. <laughs> Really, I was completely alone, just in the reflection of that lake and the moon and the stars. I just want to share that um, because we talk about imagination and manifestation. And I don't know, it's something in between. It is, I feel, I, I feel like I was protected by angels who could hear me, you know. And they said, he's, uh, let's, this time we help him. Other times he help other, other humans or help others. And this time we help him. And then suddenly a taxi appeared. The taxi driver had no answer. Yeah. Why he uh, drove that night? Why okay, that? Let's, uh, that let's, my, sorry. Let's, let's wind it up. Wind it up. Yeah. Go ahead. Wind it up.
No, I, like just, that... I just want to share that as my um, uh, little two cents for today when we talk so much about imagination and what can be controlled, what we can't control, what we wish for, what we try to manifest, what should happen. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. But uh, mostly when we see no solution, you know, and we stop asking for a solution or forcing a solution, I talk about the brain work, you know, from suddenly somewhere come help. And we cannot say where it really, from where, but this is, this is our divine connection. I see it like this. Uh, there is something uh, much deeper and much higher than we can we can explain in words or in our belief or what we think it might be like this or might be that. there are many questions and we don't have to find all the answers <laughs> we just have to appreciate when something like this happens be grateful and say see see you're not alone you know and when you in Sorry, the words are in deep ships from some deep ships some from somewhere help come. And I still believe I went just through a nervous breakdown and it happened the same. Suddenly help come from somewhere where I never expected it and not asked for. I say, you know the strong man, we say to us, Oh, I have to do it alone. I have to go alone. I don't I don't ask. I will find I have my said I did that. Uh, I'm happy when someone asks me for help and I'm happy when I can help. So we should, I should, this is just my two cents for today. We should share a lot more about what we really feel and what we all go through with all our sunshine days and ups and downs. And so things like Dino said from the, from the dragon, from that dragon monument, you know, and, and that story and how he, I read the book and how he spent there the night and with all that, uh, things you cannot see but feel and we call it in ghosts or whatever so or our imagination you know but it was a place he had to go to make that experience the same way i had to walk around home alone on that cold winter night to make that experience that is really possible that is something higher than us that's that that sends us help or an answer or a solution when we stop asking for it i just said Oh, a taxi should come, but that was not, I did not force the universe. Hey, send me now a taxi, but now, you know, I want it now because I'm the cool guy. I want it now. It was not about I, it was about us. And then in this case, the taxi driver and me and, and all about all of us, like we talk now to each other. And I have a feeling we all sit in one room. We not we not just connected online. I can feel the heartbeats of you. And this is where we are. How far we distance from each other. We all one. We are one. And one day we will realize. Later we will all be one. And we all come from the same space. Before we were born, and we go back to a very very similar space, and we are all one again. And what is it between in between our our brain? makes it so difficult when 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 celine said imagine we would all beat our heartbeat in a frequency she said how many yeah, about eight billion and when only would let's say just just an example 50 percent of the four billion would beat on the same heartbeat uh, Otto, be. i, I yes. just want to you you can carry on talking but i just anybody else has been on the Call trying to be polite to not disconnect or anything like yes, that. Yes, sorry, I talk continue. too much. I it's talk okay, too much. We okay. can share another, want, another. There are many want, examples can, each can. of us has we can share yeah. in the future. But if it's you want to go me. on, you can. I just want to say no, to no, everybody here, no, thank no, you. No, for, I want everyone can listen, but okay. uh, we all have similar stories like this to share, I think, and then sorry for losing the time frame. That's okay. So, guys, Ronald, if it's going to be quick, please be quick. It will be quick. Yeah, it will be good. quick okay. because I, w I want to say thank you and thank for joining us as well go ahead Ron. I, I want to thank you that i have the ability to be here this morning and to hear everything including you Otto. i thank, thank you, you for this opportunity i don't have any story to share i've got my stories but i needed to hear what you had to say Otto, because that is my heart's cry 
as well as what Dino and Celine had to share. So I'm just honored to be here among you. And thank you for encouraging me to come, Rashad. God bless you and God bless you all. I am finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you to all for joining on the call. You will receive on LinkedIn a notification for our next uh, event on intuition and we will go more deeper and uh, tune in and get that muscle uh, invigorated again. Have a wonderful week and um, if there's any feedback, let me know and we'll share it on the on the LinkedIn. All right. You too, guys. Have a great weekend. Rishad, okay. Rishad, thank you, thank you for all. putting this together and we do not all together. Thank you. 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 Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Ronald. Bye. Thank you, Otto. Bye-bye. Love you, Ronald. Love you too. Deeply. Thank you. Thank you, Ronald. It means a lot. Yes. We thank God for the taxis that come in our lives in any situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the yes. taxis and Aww. the angels. It was just an example. Here. Just an example was his possible. Yes, it was a metaphor. But yes, but thank, thank you, you so course. much. Love you. Bye bye. Love you thank too. you. Deep, bye deep bye. respect, Ronald. Deep respect. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you too. Thank you.